Okay, so I've had some dental issues lately. You can see a bulging at the two hind teeth there. That is a cyst that is originating from the one sixth tooth. I colored this particular tooth in yellow on this x-ray image. That tooth has an incomplete root filling and that's why bacteria got in there and led to the infection. You can see the cyst marked in red on this OPG image. But um, during the DBT image I will show you next, you will see that the cyst is actually extending very far into the sinus. Those are the slices of a digital volume tomography. You can see my nose and my frontal teeth are coming into the picture right now. My orbita, my eyes. And you can see the nostrils and the sinuses. Uh, we'll go back to that in a bit. And you can see the back of my skull and my spine and the hollow bone near the ears and stuff. Well, let's go back to the sinus now. So let's stop right there where we have a good view of the sinus. I will now mark a region of interest. Um, that is my right eye. You gotta imagine that you're looking right at me as if I was standing in front of me, so that is my right eye. Currently I'm marking my left eye just so you can see the dimension of the eye and the orbiter. This will be one of the teeth in my upper right jaw and the tooth in my lower right jaw. You can see that very well on this image, I think. But let's take those marks away again and actually take a look at the sinus. This is the left maxillary sinus, black is what appears to be air and this is what it should be like. On the other hand you can already see what is going on in the right sinus and all that tissue that seems so out of place in there is actually the cyst that is originating from the one sixth tooth. It has actually led to a chronic sinusitis and infection in the sinus and well you can just see the diameter of that huge cyst in there. It's quite crazy. I will now create a distance measurement and you can see on this point it's 23.9 millimeters. And uh, yeah, that's quite large and you can see the infection is spreading on the top of the sinus as well and stuff. And if you zoom through it you can see um, the cyst actually links up to the top of the sinus and right below the orbital where the eye is located in. And it's 36.1 millimeters in diameter. Uh, just on the very back side. And you can see it's yeah, it's basically covering the whole sinus while the other side is empty as it should be. Here's a lateral so sideways view. You can see my left sinus as the big hollow spot there and my teeth. You can see very well that one of these teeth has a crown as well. It's the one on the very back but it does not seem to be infected or anything. And that's the left sinus and it looks as it should look. And you can see the crown and the teeth with the intact roots and the nerves and all this stuff located in my lower jaw. It's a really beautiful image. Moving right along you can see my other teeth. And then there is my nasal cavity. You can see the airway. Which is just This is the nasal cavity. Airway that goes down um, into the trachea and lungs. And my frontal teeth there, jawbone. And let's move on to the right sinus. And again you can see the large mass that is located within the right sinus. A dental cyst of course. I think that right there on the root you can actually see the infection site. That seems like a bit of a different spot there. I'll take away the region of interest so you can see it again. Take a close look. You see that? That seems to be the primary site of infection that actually led to this large cyst in here. And for the third dimension you can see here on the left side there's my right sinus maxillaris again and the large cyst in there. And my teeth coming into the picture. I don't know what that ring is by the way. It seems to be quite a distortion. I don't know what caused it. And you can see my teeth and the roots of my teeth there. They look really beautiful and are less dense than the actual teeth. And the metal distortions from fillings and stuff. And 
yeah you can see fillings there and going into the sinus you can see where there's supposed to be air there's already the cyst and it seems originating from that uh, root I just marked with the mouse cursor you can see the large cyst in my sinus that would be the region of interest for the surgery so what they did is they performed root amputation on two out of three roots on the one six tooth and you can see where the cyst used to be bulging out there's actually kind of a hole in there that is covered with uh, my gums of course but they used to um, cut a flap from my gums and um, pull that away to be able to reach the bone, then drill uh, through the bone and open the sinus cavity from my oral cavity and extract the whole cyst. Needless to say, I'm really happy this happened in general anesthesia. This is day one after the surgery. You can see the sutures quite well. And this is day two and things seem to be healing very well. But I suppose you'd rather want to see some fancy 3D volume rendering, so here goes. You can see that it's quite pixelated and not fully rendered if I'm moving it and then just gets re-rendered afterwards. So um, that's why I actually have to take single pictures and I'm not able to actually record this from a video capturing utility like I did with the slices before. 3D volume rendering actually consumes a lot of resources. You can see that the process is taking up 800 megabytes of RAM. And um, if I move the rendered image around, you will see that it occupies all four of my physical CPU cores to a full 100%. So, yeah, it requires a lot of resources. So, let's do some rendering. Here you can see my teeth and my skull and how the teeth are beautifully embedded within my skull. You can see how large those roots are actually. And my skin being rendered. You can see I have my eyes closed there. And there's a full skin rendering. And I'd say you can quite clearly see that this is me. So that's quite amazing. And let's take away my skin again. And rotate my skull around a bit. And you can see I seem to have quite a bit of an overbite here. But with the skin back on, it doesn't look so bad. But you can also have a more typical x-ray appearance with soft tissue rendering and then put in some teeth. It's really awesome what you can do with this. Or you could just render the whole skull and do a 360 degrees view of it, which is nice as well. You probably remember the 3D volume rendering of that guy who had a large portion of his lower jaw removed. We are actually going to use his DVT for an interesting comparison from a male to a female skull. So that's his skull as you know, and that's my skull. Take a look again and compare the skulls. And now for a sideways view. And you can probably see the difference already. You can see that his skull seems to be more round and compact and uh, yeah, also of higher density somewhat, while my skull seems rather oval and long and has a finer bone structure. You can see that his jaw looks much more compact and heavy compared to mine. And also you can see my orbiter, my eye sockets, appear to be larger. Which you can clearly see here in this comparison. So yeah, I hope that you enjoyed this little insight into 3D volume rendering of DVT X-ray images.